Superman actor Henry Cavill and former superbike champion Neil Hodgson are attempting one of the most extreme drives on the planet. This is proper hardcore. Vast, untouched, wild. They're in northwest China to tackle the hottest road on Earth. Snaking across the Taklamakan Desert, this deadly track is infamous for engine-busting, scorching temperatures. We cannot repair this. It's, it's terminal. 100-mile-an-hour <laughs> sandstorms. Stick together, guys. Stick together. Don't rush. The world's biggest sand dunes. And an evil desert basin. So hot, nothing survives for long. We're now up to 54 degrees C. This hellish 800-kilometer assault course guarantees to take man and machine to breaking point. I do action films. Let's pretend. This is the real deal. Henry Cavill, star of the Superman movie Man of Steel, and Neil Hodgson, legendary bike racer, have just landed in China. It's their first day, and at 9 a.m., the temperature is already pushing 40 degrees. They're heading to the car they must drive across the Taklamakan Desert, otherwise known as the Desert of Death. There it is. Hey, look how jacked up it is. It's got yeah. adventure written it's all over it. That's our tracker, so everyone knows where we are. Right, GPS, thermometer, massive thermometer, <laughs> and our sat phone. Ooh, look at the beast. It's a 4.2 six-cylinder. This sort of engine is absolutely ideal for the terrain we're going on. This is the start. This is the start of the journey. Yeah. Henry may be Superman's man of steel, but he and Neil are about to begin a journey that will be sure to test their metal. Put your head, put it that way. They plan to drive 800 kilometers on the world's hottest road from Hami to Arumshi, officially the furthest city on Earth from the sea. This expedition isn't for the faint-hearted. It will encompass a bewildering variety of desert terrain, from soft, quagmire-like sands, bone-jarring, dried-out riverbeds, slippery shale and precipitous giant dunes. Over the centuries, countless lives have been lost in the killer 50-degree heat. The first Westerners came here in the late 1800s and perished. Even today, few travellers brave this journey. Being a motorcycle racer, I'm used to dangers, but this is way out of my comfort zone. The car rolls, people's lives are in danger. This expedition is genuinely for men of steel. Supporting Neil and Henry's Driven to Extremes mission is a crack team of experts, led by Mac McKenney, a former mastermind behind Serrano Fine's expeditions. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is going to be a very difficult expedition. It's not called the Desert of Death for nothing. Max backed up by ex-Raw Marine Commando Aldo Kane, who takes care of security. When things go wrong in the desert, they go wrong quickly and they go wrong drastically. And there's former rally raid driver and adventure mechanic Paul Marsh. Everything takes punishment on this vehicle. We fitted really good quality shock absorbers. We've used all-terrain tires, but you've got to have the right oil. If you don't use the right oil, it will just destroy the engine. And the lives of the entire team depend on these vehicles. Meanwhile, in downtown Hami, the presence of Superman and one of the world's most recognizable bike racers is causing quite a stir. I mean, We've got a little bit of an audience here. Oh, yeah? I hope I don't stall it when I set off. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm sweating already. <laughs> it should take Henry and Neil four days and nights to travel across the desert. Any longer is certain to take a heavy toll on both man and machine. They must rely on each other to navigate a safe route, but as they start out, they're total strangers. Where, where did you shoot Superman? Uh, we shot that in Illinois and Vancouver and Edwards Air Force Base in California. Where's that in California? Yeah. Whereabouts? In the desert. Right, right. And um, it got hot throughout the day, sure. But it wasn't like this. No. 
I lived in uh, Southern California for four years. I raced in America as well. I did like the American Superbike Championships. Right. Such a cool place. Neil's been interested with blazing the initial trail. While the Superbike Champ has achieved virtually everything racing for their iconic Ducati team, he's never tried driving across soft desert sands before. We're going to get stuck and... Yeah, definitely. I think more so when you're driving though. You just got to start facing the oh, bikes. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm you're not, a better I'm actor not, than I'm me, not, but I'm, I'm going to outdrive you. You know, I'm just telling you that now. You know. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You're better at crashing. Half an hour later, they're on the outskirts of Hami. Here, the city abruptly gives way to harsh desert, stretching endlessly into the distance. I thought of three really good words. Go on. Vast, untouched, wild. I'm feeling intrigued. Yeah, I'm still excited. How, I want to, to see how this develops. Yeah. The camp tonight, I want to see how that works out. I'm intrigued yeah. to see what, when we get in the real, real desert, if this isn't really the real desert. Like dewy stuff. Yeah, we'll, put, we'll take the handbrake off as well. They don't seem to like it when they've been on for three or four yeah. miles. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be great. Mate, we're in the desert. <laughs> oh, this makes me wanna be on a motocross bag. <laughs> it's hardcore, this is proper hardcore. It's better than I expected, this. <laughs> Can't see a person. Not only is air conditioning banned, as it uses too much precious fuel, They've had to shut all windows to stop choking dust engulfing them. So much for us, what, what we'll do, we'll have our window down and all that lot. Yeah. There's definitely there's no chance we can have our window down. So easy to get stuck here. It's so easy to get stuck. As soon as, yeah. You drop the revs too low. It's stressful. It is. Going to the left, badly. Go on, baby. Come on, you can do it, you can do it, come on. Neil and Henry's fears have come true. One of the world's greatest drivers has already been caught out by the desert. It feels like you, you go along and then you just get sucked in and it feels like someone's just grabbed the handbrake because it almost pulls you down like that and that's the sand grabbing hold of the wheels. And I'm shocked actually, I feel quite embarrassed how useless I am. With the time approaching midday, the thermometer is well past 40 degrees. It's vital they dig the car out quickly and get moving again. So, do, where do you, where do I need to go? Am I? We're going to try going forward. All right. Even short exposure to this extreme temperature, doing hard labour can lead to heat exhaustion, or worse still, heat stroke. This is a life-threatening condition where the body's core temperature overheats, causing cells to break down and vital organs to fail. After 30 minutes, former Royal Marine Commando Aldo is worried the boys are overdoing it. So after all that exertion there, this is the, you know, it's midday. Even just that half an hour's worth of digging out there, yeah, yeah. you've probably expelled quite a lot of water. So you really need to, when you get back in the vehicles, start drinking, chugging it down. Yeah. Just as they get some grip again, the inevitable happens. This is car four. Um, I believe we are stuck again. Over. With rehydration becoming a serious issue, expedition leader Mac has some more bad news. Just so you know, car eight. Top hose is gone. OK, and it's dumped all its water out of the engine. It's going to be all hands on deck. We've got to go and fix it. Right, boys, let's get this one moving. <laughs> A mile away, mechanic Paul Marsh is at the stricken support vehicle. We've just come through an absolutely horrendous patch of sand. Here, we've actually got a, a, a radiator fan, electric fan, and the fan has disintegrated, punched a hole through the radiator, which you can see over there. That started leaking fluid out, and of course, it got to a point where the vehicle engine just heated up and heated up until the actual radiator burst. We cannot repair this. It's, it's terminal. The best solution is leave this vehicle right here. Well, this vehicle won't be going any further. 
just three hours into their journey and the desert is proving a formidable opponent. Water is being strictly rationed at five litres per person per day to keep loads light. If they fall too far behind schedule, they'll be in real danger of running out. And in this environment, that could be fatal. Over the next few hours, progress continues to be stop-start. Time and again, vehicles flounder in the soft, enveloping sands. Getting stuck four or five times in a row, it's, uh, it's draining stuff, that's for sure. Eventually, the convoy clears the deep sands. Beauty. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Back on hard terrain, Henry must drive as fast as he dares to try and make camp before nightfall. This car is a beast. You yeah. don't really get to feel quite what it's like seeing the basket scene. No. Finally, they reach camp just as the sun is setting. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's a good feeling now. Yeah. That's like proper relief. Well done, mate. We've done well. There we go. Check that out. I know, I know. They, that is a scenery. Yeah, I know. It's proper view, isn't it? Must. The desert landscape may be breathtaking, but comfortable it most certainly isn't. So how does this work then? This is some inflatable, obviously. Neil and Henry will have to sleep out in the open and hope the local wildlife doesn't pay a visit. I feel all dizzy. <laughs> so, <laughs> right yeah. What do you think? Get a bit of a campfire going then? Yeah. There you go. Look at that. She's, she's on the way now. Eh? How did we get here? We drove here, mate. Still to come. That is unbelievable. Henry and Neil face their worst fear. You need help, you need help, you need help. Is he conscious? And the further they drive, the hotter it gets. It is a matter of life and death. Superman actor Henry Cavill and superbike champ Neil Hodgson are attempting to cross China's desert of death. So far, they've had to battle quagmire-like sands, a blown radiator from the extreme heat, while a dwindling water supply is a growing concern. It's the morning of day two of their four-day mission. Good morning, everyone. Pretty stunning night last night. We woke up uh, in the middle of the night, and it was, all you could see was just a blanket of stars above you. It did get a little chilly at one stage though. And we get to wake up to this. Got to be some of the luckiest people on the planet right now. Ahead, Henry and Neil face another challenging 220 kilometer desert leg, culminating with an awe-inspiring spectacle of the largest sand dunes on Earth. And we're on. Day two. It's 30 degrees, what time is it? Um, it's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock in the morning. It's 30 degrees. We've got seven hours driving, I think, today. It's going to be a long day. After all their problems with clogging sand on day one, the driving is much easier. But in the desert, danger can strike at any time. So we've got a problem here. I don't know what's going on. Problem here. What's up, mate? On, What's happened? Help. 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 Henry and Neil are initially unaware oh, mate, that this is a staged oh, exercise. Is he conscious? Oh, no, he's unconscious. He help. Right, hang on, we've got, we've got someone unconscious. He's conscious. He's all right. We've got. Help! help. Hurry up! They're being put to the test to see how they shape up to a desert emergency. All right, he's all right, mate. Is he right. Yeah, he's got a pulse. He's breathing. He's breathing. Analyzing them in this stressful and realistic scenario is Chief Medic Paul Calicott. Look, it's 
gold okay, guys. Guys. Well, it's got to be. Okay, guys, stop there. All right, Paul, could you switch that horn off, please? How did you feel when you when you rolled around the corner and saw that? What? what, what? Well, I've got to say, horrendous. Uh, what really worried me was that I don't know how to use that kit. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do, effectively. Now, Hodgie, you went straight for Mac, and just by doing something as simple as rolling him onto his side, you've saved his life. <laughs> if you leave somebody like that on their back... They'll die. They'll die. Yeah. Henry, we know just straight away, without any medical training, this guy's screaming, therefore he's breathing. All right. Always be suspicious as a really quiet casualties. Right. All I can say is the lessons that we learn are, number one, how remote we are. Number two is let's get familiar with this kit. Well, first of all, I actually feel I'm slightly in shock. It's a lot harder than you think it's going to be doing something like that. You need to know what to do because it is a panic situation. If it happens for real, the adrenaline goes up and you can't focus, you can't think straight. And so just to have this basic prep is enough to potentially save lives. It's been a wake-up call for the boys. The next time, it could be for real. Good way of getting walking up. You know, I like that kind of stuff. It's the way to learn. Definitely the way to learn. They also have a new respect for their emergency kit they must carry at all times. We've got these grab bags, which got a, a collection of things that would uh, give you a lot longer to survive. The main thing being a drink in there, we've, you've got your camel bag, which we try and keep topped up at all times. We've got flares in there, so if you got lost at night, you've got a flare. These grab bags are essential, really essential. It is a matter of life and death. After a couple of hours of relatively straightforward driving, they're met by a major obstacle. It's a rutted, dried out riverbed that demands precise maneuvering. This looks like a job for. What's that? Hey, I know it's Superman. Never done this before. Yeah, I've got to say, this is the sort of thing I do very, very often. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I know. it's cool, though. Of the journey, this is probably the coolest part, for, for just something totally different. It's saying it does look like the Wild West around here. It's really cool. Over the last 2,000 years, this hostile region has claimed countless lives. It's no surprise this place is known as the Fury of God. It's like we're driving across the moon, I tell you. That is unbelievable. You got it. Look at this valley. What a journey. It just keeps getting better. But there's not much time to enjoy the scenery. There's still 100 kilometres to go before they reach the edge of the desert of death, which means no time for long lunches. Um, yeah, what these are uh, military rations, and when we're on the road like this, sometimes you have to be quick, you have to stop, get some uh, energy back in the body. It's quick, easy, and probably full of all the good stuff. Meanwhile, mechanic Paul Marsh strikes on another way for a more sophisticated bite. Now, what I want to see is if I can cook this egg. Merely using the ambient temperature in the car's cab, he rustles up an omelette inside five minutes. You're not going to believe it, but that egg is cooked. I'd eat that. Bit of salt and pepper, and I've cooked an egg off the heat in this cabin here. Oh, that looks delicious. Mm, it's good. After their brief pit stop under the blistering midday sun, it's back on the dusty trail again. It's 45 degrees inside the cabin here. I've got my drinking water now. I'm almost convinced if I put a tea bag in it. Yeah. And have, a, and have a nice warm tea. I was tea. just thinking it's like drinking bath water. Yeah. It's that warm. It's that warm. It sort of dries your eyeballs out, doesn't it? Yeah, it's hot air. Four hours of gruelling driving later, the boys finally see their day two end destination. We made it. The soaring sand dunes on the edge of the Taklamakan Desert. 
These are the biggest sand dunes in the world. Second to none. Forget about Sahara Desert, whatever you think about deserts and sand dunes, they've got nothing on this. As they cover the last few kilometres, the temptation is to put the foot down. I'll read you over. The five there are hidden gullies with very severe drop. If you're hidden at speed, you can potentially roll the car. Rolling the car will be incredibly dangerous. Without wheels, they'll be stranded. No one will come to save them as they're now out of helicopter rescue range. Another drop here, mate. Serious one, two. Finally, they reach their second desert camp. Sand, sand, and more <laughs> sand. There's a lot of sand. And the prospect of another sleepless night on the hard desert floor. But this time, it looks like a slightly softer landing. It's very hard and crispy on top. And underneath, this is the surprising bit. Soft sand. Look, soft sand. Look, look compare the two. Compare the two. That's what it's like. That's a grippy bit on the top. Look and at that. that. It's just beautiful. Two different things entirely. It's just lovely though. I can't wait to get to bed tonight and just curl up in it all. I'm going to start exfoliating now, in fact. <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> Try it, seriously. I feel younger. Look at my skin. Yeah. As the sun disappears, the team plan a route for the most dangerous section of their journey, crossing the giant dunes of the desert of death. Really dangerous driving up these uh, dunes. Yeah. When you turn around and look back, mm. you realise quite how much space is out here and the scale of what these are. Still to come, the water situation becomes critical. We will eventually run out of water and the desert of death bites back. Guys, do not underestimate this. It's so dangerous out here. I mean, it's lethal. Henry Cavill and Neil Hodgson are halfway through their 800 kilometer trek across one of the hottest roads on Earth. dawn on day three. Morning everybody. Morning number three. We've got a pretty spectacular sunrise here at the base of the dunes. Here's our Neil. And behind Neil are these monsters. Today is make or break for that 800 kilometer expedition. They must drive 78 kilometers across the biggest, hottest sand dune desert in the world to the tiny village oasis of Daikona. Neither Henry or Neil have attempted radical 500 meter plus dune driving. In this terrain, put a wheel wrong and you can roll the vehicle. This is what we've come here to do. I will admit, I'm a little nervous, of course. It's a daunting prospect, but the boys must tackle the mountainous dunes. They're now at the point of no return, as supplies won't last if they turn back. And expedition leader Mac has just discovered their situation is more critical than realised. Just to let you guys know, we've had a count up of the water. We're down to our last 20 litres per car, OK? But obviously, we've just got to uh, conserve it. With the journey being a lot tougher and hotter than imagined, everyone has drunk more than their allocated five litres of water each day. And there's a heat wave warning, suggesting the desert could be more punishing than usual. I cannot believe the punishment this engine's gonna get yeah. just on this sort of two or three hour leg of the journey. I mean, it's brutal. In this heat, you see how there's been torture on the engine. We're at 2,500 revs most of the time, if not 3,500. It's um, something we've been warned about just to keep an eye on the, the engine temp. The engine's going to take a lot of punishment, but so are the drivers. As they head once more into the desert furnace, they'll need to be vigilant for early signs of dehydration. These include dizziness, headaches, and loss of concentration. Not ideal when you have to pick your way through dunes with deadly drop-offs, 
One mistake and it could be their last. After an hour, they take a much needed break. How'd it feel? Tell you what, that was a little bit scarier than I thought. Yeah. Doing the, um, over them dunes. Definitely out of my comfort zone. I think people think because I race motorcycles that you're, you're extra brave or something, which is right. not, not the case at all. It's, you, I'm in my comfort zone when I'm on a motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, in fact, I'm quite a wimp. Yeah, clearly a yellow belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, without yeah. saying. Coward. I won't go that far. As they hit the dune trail again, the temperature in the cab soars past 40 degrees. With the engine having to work extra hard, mechanic Paul has to make a difficult call. Car three to car four. Can you put your heater on now? I need to dissipate heat away from the engine. Roger. Well, for the first time, officially, we now have the heating on in the car. Switching on the car heater sucks heat away from the engine. But while the machine is being protected, man must suffer. Temperature check, we're now up to 54 degrees C in the cockpit. And the poor driver is actually in direct sunlight as well, so... Listen, so keep an eye on the Yeah, seriously, if, you, if you're feeling tired or anything, just tell me because this is brutal. Worse still, they find soft sand again. And for good measure, one of the support cars suffers a puncture. Okay, it's guys. Mac's worst case scenario. Uh, we are seriously in trouble if this keeps happening. We will eventually run out of water and it won't take too long. With all this stopping and exertion, every time you move, it's almost like being at altitude. You know, you're finding it difficult to breathe, not because there's no oxygen, it's just because it's so hot and you, you can't exert yourself. It's really, uh, it's really difficult to be out here. With the water situation now critical, former Royal Marine Aldo Kane is dispatched to a nearby gorge. It has a stream, but the water's too salty to drink. When you taste it, the water's off, you can't drink it. So you could get here and there's water all around you and you would die within you know, a day if you drank that stuff. So what we do is take solar still, it works by evaporation and condensation. You put the bad water in and it evaporates up and then it runs down into a gutter jiggle like that. Can you see it's almost like it's raining inside, running down. So you could survive with one of these. Perfect. There's no salt whatsoever in that. The solar still may give them a litre or two of drinkable water. Back at the convoy, Henry and Neil finally managed to free their vehicle. But their midday hard toil has meant they're down to their last drops of water. Do you I don't know how much we've got left now. For the, like for the rest of the day, we haven't got much. No, my camelback's empty as well. Eventually, they catch up with Aldo at the gorge. He's come through big time by producing five litres of drinking water from the brackish stream. With speed now of the essence, Neil has taken over the driving duties. Late in the afternoon, they glimpse the village of Dykena in the distance. Might be a ridge just here, dead ahead of us. Yeah. But as they reach the valley floor, they hit the softest sand yet. Neil's driving skills are tested to the max. He must speed up to 50 miles an hour to prevent another beaching. Thick, thick, thick. OK, big ridges ahead on the left there. Be very careful. Yeah. Dead ahead, in fact, there's ridges. Well done. Good angle. Yeah, go between these two tracks. And there's a bit of a drop off just here on half of the right hand side of the car. Well, well done, mate. Well, well, we've made it. We have made it. And I'll tell you what, we almost didn't. That yeah. was the last uh, kilometre to here was the deepest sand. I was flat <laughs> out in full low 4x4, four four, yeah. pinned 
about 4,000 RPM and the, the car, I just felt the car... It just, just being grabbed by the yeah, sand, just being grabbed, pulling it down. It, like, just stopped floating, so we made it to the Oasis. Oh, that was something else. And the dust, the level oh, of dust there. Is, you yeah. couldn't, the visibility was zero if you were behind anyone or if the wind changed direction <laughs> and it blew the dust across from the car. Then we literally we couldn't see, so that was, that was pretty sketchy, actually. You've got to, yeah. We, well done, mate. Again. Yeah, yeah. Waiting to greet Henry and Neil is a local legend, Bike Lee. Nice to meet you. Oh, that's right. Nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's known as the living map for his incredible ability to navigate the desert and aid it. Thank you, Shishi. That's fantastic, actually. It's the first cold drink we've had in days. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. We've heard that you're called the living map. Uh, why is that? Yeah, 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 down shandola. What Baba yeah, down shandola. What yeah, down shandola. What Arzi yeah, down shandola. San shan shandola, naga function so ha, naga function so ha. Ah, uh, they can chan bu jito. They can chan super jito. So ha, I can chan jito super jinti. Ah, lu ni ge di ban yo, I can chan ge di ban hui lai de ha. San ya bu kan, they can function kan ha. Has he ever got stuck in the desert? No, no, no. Never. 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 <laughs> oh, well. He's my yeah. hero. Yeah. My hero. Tomorrow, Henry and Neil could do with their living map. Their route takes them down into the Turpan Basin, the hottest place in China. And at 150 metres below sea level, the second lowest place on Earth. It's not somewhere to lose your way. First, though, they must find a suitable spot to camp before it gets dark. It's 3 a.m. Mayhem has broken out in the camp. Nightmare, I've just got like from nowhere, and I mean literally nowhere, within a minute, just like a massive sandstorm has come, and it's just absolutely horrendous. Immediately, Aldo and Max military training kicks in. Okay, boys, gather around and everyone to listen to this very clearly, and they all understand exactly what's going to happen. But as you can see, the wind has picked up very dramatically. It could get to such a degree we won't be able to see a hand in front of our face. So we've got to move out of here immediately and make our way back to the village. It's so dangerous out here. I mean, it's lethal. If, uh, if anyone gets uh, separated from the group, I mean, you wouldn't you would not have a clue because you, I mean, you just can't see anything. I mean, I've never experienced anything like it. Sure, it's actually a dangerous situation, but we've got professionals looking after us as well. So as long as we keep together, then uh, we'll all be okay. Before we go anywhere, everyone pick up your day sack and put it on. Do not leave it down. Just get everything you need to survive out here. Make sure you've got it on your back. Uh, I've got my goggles. Obviously, I've got my headlights on, but I've got to get a shimmer on the keys. Behind the last wagon. <coughs> It's really hard to breathe. It's, it's, it's just the finest sand, and I don't know if you can see how fast it's blowing. But it's uh, it's a, it's scary, really scary. Right, well, let's get everyone in number off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, Mr. G's fifteen. Jane is sixteen. Seventeen. Okay, we're on to village. This is incredibly dangerous. If anyone gets separated, their chances of survival are remote. Behind me, there's going to be uh, there's 12 people left, Thank so you. there's going to be six sets of pairs walking next to each other, almost holding hands, shoulder to shoulder. Radio's on both cars. This is not a stunt for television. This is this is the real this deal. Here. Yeah, yeah, but in a bit of shock. Next people behind Jasper and Tim. Do not underestimate this. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. The first part of their evacuation is complete. 
with everyone making it to the vehicles. But the most dangerous part, driving out of the storm, is yet to come. In the middle of one of the hottest deserts on Earth, Henry Cavill, Neil Hodgson and their support team are fighting a violent sandstorm. Get it wrong in these conditions and the consequences can be fatal. So we pulled to a halt and vehicles are taking us in threes and fours. So we should be all in vehicles en route to the village very shortly. Henry, go, go, Henry, go. Here, straight in. One, two, three. Drivers outside. Right, everyone inside the vehicles. Everyone inside the vehicles. Everyone can move out. out. I think we've used pretty much everything we were supposed to have in our grab bags. <laughs> Good right this. <laughs> Half an hour later, everyone makes it safely to their local guide Bikley's house in the nearby village of Dykena. We are now back at the village. We're moving inside. Ugly. <laughs> can everyone just stand in a line there, just shoulder to shoulder, just so that we can see everyone's in? Okay, we're all present. Okay. Well done, gentlemen. Just a uh, quick point it's four o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't know if anyone else was aware, I was lying awake, but there was a, a duck devil spun through the top end of where we were camping there. That's why that wind suddenly picked up. If we were spread as far apart as we were the other night and that kicked off, you will not find each other. And you can't underestimate what we just got out of there. You can, you can see why we bang on about the training and the grab bags. It's, 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 not, um, it's not for play, it's not for show, it's for real life stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A round of applause for the drivers. Yes. It's now approaching dawn, and in a few hours' time, Henry and Neil face their most strenuous day of the expedition. What a night. Yeah. You cannot believe. And last night, we were climbing these dunes. You see over there, it was all very hilly. Now it looks almost flat. It really does bring it home. Those guys, I genuinely feel, and it sounds a bit cheesy, but we owe our lives to them. Honestly, that, that's, that's how severe it was. It was, it was crazy. Despite being exhausted, Henry and Neil face their longest drive yet. 313 kilometers through China's lowest and hottest terrain, en route to Arumshi, the furthest city in the world from the ocean. I didn't think we'd be pushing ourselves this hard. And now we're gonna, this is the hard part. This is, we, it's getting harder, it's getting hotter. Every day we get in that car, it's getting hotter. It and feels barren here. Yeah, this is, um... I don't know the sky is dark as well. Yeah, it, is, it feels very arid. The temperature check at the moment is 40 degrees outside, inside the cab, 42. And altitude, we are at minus 91 meters. So we are now below the level of the sea. And well, descending. And descending. Over the next 60 kilometers, the altitude continues to drop and the temperature rise. Adding to the stifling conditions are winds that drag in more heat from the surrounding deserts. To our right, it's definitely what looks like it used to be an inland sea of some sort or a vast lake. So it's, it's quite funny, we're looking at a complete and utter dry, flat lake bed and it's massive. <laughs> yeah. And for the first time on the whole trip, we've got like quite an overcast sky which makes this area especially, makes it feel like I'm on the moon again. I've said it a few times on this journey, but you just, you're experiencing something that you, you've never experienced. You just, it feels really bizarre. In July 2011, the dried out Aiding Lake recorded China's hottest temperature at 50.2 degrees centigrade in the shade. Nothing stirs here, since nothing can survive the scorching hellhole. Remain long in this environment and delirium would set in, followed by certain death.
Finally, the boy's altimeter reads minus 154 meters. This is the lowest point in China, but for them, their highest point. Over three and a half days, they've battled sinking sands, water shortages, precipitous dunes, and a vicious sandstorm. Now they've reached their last major landmark at one of the most bleak, inhospitable, and remote places on Earth. Made it. We made it. Really enjoyed it, but... <laughs> and it sort of feels worth it. I'm glad there is a monument here. Yeah, it's cool, cool. It's great. Well done. Yeah, and you did it. Henry and Neil have proved man can survive this extreme heat examination. Now it remains to see how the machine coped. This is going to be incredibly hot. So we've just topped 80 degrees. Wow. So that's, that's, that's warm. Hot. That's hotter than I'd expect. Uh, and the oil we've got in here is doing its job, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. And as you know, a grain of sand will actually, inside your engine, will do a huge amount of damage. I'm going to show you what this coarse sandpaper will do to an apple without any lubricant whatsoever. It's totally destroyed the skin of the apple. There's no lubricant, and that's what sand does to the inside of your engine. So let's take some oil now. Now applying the same amount of pressure, this is doing no damage to the apple. Yeah. This, this film of oil is protecting the skin. That's exactly what happens inside the engine. Right. Back on the road for the last time, this region of China is not just desert. There are areas of outstanding natural beauty. The limestone gorges of flaming mountains are set alight each day by nothing more than the colour of daylight. They are breathtaking in their beauty. The entire route of this expedition was once followed by Marco Polo back in the 13th century. Little has changed since then, until now. China's fast-track economic boom will soon see this route completely tarmacked over. It's incredible to be here and be the last ones travelling this way, but it's also kind of sad that this wilderness is now going to become a major artery into civilization. Soon the boys get their first taste of tarmac after four days. So I've been thinking, Henry, when this is all done, how is it about me and you? You know, one day maybe... Well, just... stop that. I lost you at me and you. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, you know, just meeting up for a coffee sometime and just, you know, sh just hanging out. You can teach me how to ride a bike. And that would be cool. That would be cool. A few hours later, they finally made it. The city of Arumshi brings to an end their epic 800-kilometre desert endurance test. I didn't have much in the way of off-road driving experience before I got here, and I've come away with my fear of it, my fear of approaching it, completely gone. Between me and Henry, you know, there were some reservations when you, when you meet a, an A-lister Hollywood actor, you know, how is that going to be? I didn't know if I'd actually get along with Henry, but um, he's a mate. Uh, Neil's fantastic, really, really nice guy, fantastic at driving, got us out of some very sticky situations. I've crashed motorcycles at well over 150 miles an hour. I'm used to driving to extremes. This was another level altogether. Trips like this can do nothing but change you. Um, experiencing extremes, seeing nature at its best, its most beautiful, its most dangerous, is a life-changing experience. Definitely driven to extremes.